And it's this. I want to say right now that we serve an awesome God. Amen. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who is like no other. He is the Almighty, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. And he is worthy of our praise, worship, and all glory. That is who He is. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Savior. He is Deliverer. And we can take that to the bank. Whatever He says, that's the way it is. And we need to receive that in faith and expectation. That what He says, He means. The enemy wants to tell you different. Your flesh wants to tell you different. It's not true. He means what He says. Believe me. Yes. Expect great things. Yes, Lord. Expect great things, even if you don't feel any different in a minute or two minutes. Expect it. Because I, I want to share a witness with you. That many years ago, for a long time, I had sciatic problems. And uh, as Tom well knows, that hurts. <laughs> Bad. And um, I had to actually go to the doctor. Because I was finally, you know, when nothing was happening, I finally, I said, oh, I need relief. And all the doctor said to me was, you need to lose weight. I didn't like that. It's true. I didn't like it. So I went to my car, and I said to the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry that I have treated this temple like a garbage dump. And I repented. And then there was uh, somebody who was actually praying for people, back in Borak. Uh, who came down to uh, Lake for Bible Camp. And uh, we were, along with New Life, we were uh, hosting that. And uh, she said, the Lord showed her that there are people who need healing from sciatica. Well, I found out that the only one suffering. There were like 500 guys. We're all lined up. And she prayed for me. And I believed. And you know what? I did not feel any different one I opened after she prayed. But you know what I did do? I began to praise and thank God. Amen. You know why? Because He's right and it's true. Yeah. And I don't care what my body says. I know what He says. Yes. He said, I'm healed. I'm healed. Done. And I started praising Him. And then I got back in my car. I felt a little bit better. And then I said, Lord, I believe in you. And I'm putting the pills away. It was Advil, what it was. And that was like maybe two, three years ago. And I haven't had a sciatic problem since. Hallelujah. Praise so God. praise the Lord. Praise, praise God. God. It's not important how you feel at the moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, praise God when a miracle happens. And I want you to tell people that. Yes. What's important is that you believe that He has done yes. what He has promised. That's right. And that leads me to point number two. And then I'll shut up because you didn't come here to hear me. <laughs> but point number two is this. When you have been touched by the Lord, guess what? You have an obligation now. Your obligation is to share what you know with somebody else. It could be a friend, a co-worker, it could be a family member. But we are not to keep this to ourselves because God has told us to be missionaries where we are. And you may be a farmer or whatever you are, and that's an honorable, good, and holy service. But what God has touched you, you need to let people know. Amen. Because there are a lot of people hungry for God. Don't keep it to yourself. Hallelujah. Because it's not just for you. When God's pouring out into you, Amen. He expects you to pour out into somebody else. Hallelujah. And by the way, as long as we're willing to pour out to other people, it's a biblical principle. He'll keep pouring in. That's right. But if we decide. I got mine. Good luck with you. <laughs> well then, how can you receive more when you won't pour out? Because you end up being the steward that, that isn't faithful. Yeah. So keep that in mind. If God has touched you, share it. Pour into somebody else's life. Be a disciple. And with that in mind, I want to remind you that the next two nights we are having discipleship meetings here. Same time, 6.30. So if you want to be blessed, I would encourage you to come to that so that you can find out biblically how we can go about the business of the kingdom as people who have met the Lord yes. and are ready to share him with others. All right, with that in mind,
God bless you, Tom. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm excited tonight. Praise well, the Lord. Well, don't be too excited. You're not on <laughs> <laughs>
You know, maybe you just need to wake up to the call of God. We talked about that this morning. You know, there's a purpose on your life, and maybe that's what you need. Or maybe you need a healing. A lot of people are hindered in the call of God because they need healing. They have a brokenness on the inside that really keeps them from stepping into their calling. And so God wants to bring healing, and He wants to redirect your path. He wants to encourage you. He wants to stir you. He wants to bring revival in this area. Amen. 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 Now, when you got started shouting, you got to give me another, give me a good amen. 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 That's pretty good. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, it's great to be with you. I want to mention our, as Pastor Rob said, we've got a book table out there. Uh, we've got some great materials. This is a way we extend our ministry through uh, books and CDs and different things. We're also on the internet. If you get a chance, get on our website. We have uh, literally hundreds of blog posts podcasts, videos on there to encourage you and help you teach you. And uh, we've got our latest uh, CD is called uh, Peace, Scriptures, and Prayers. And if you have our healing CD, it's right along the same line, but it's uh, focusing on peace. Because a lot of people need peace mm. inside. And actually, sometimes we need to fix them on the inside so we can be fixed on the outside. Yep. So... Uh, pick this up. I think it'll really bless you. And there's uh, some other great materials. A book I wrote called uh, You Can Touch the World, a book that my wife wrote. And uh, I've been hearing several ladies telling me they want her to come. So pray about that. At, uh, woohoo! Right away. <laughs> and where are the ladies at? Now what? Say woohoo! <laughs> woohoo! All right. <laughs> All right. So the books and CDs are on a free will offering basis. Give what you're led to give. It helps us with, uh, to get more materials and with our uh, evangelism to the world. Uh, if you need to make a check, you can make it to Tom Shanklin Ministries. We also have some of our newsletters there. We put out a, a monthly newsletter. And uh, we'd love to stay in touch, too, if you'd like to be on our mailing list or email list or both. Uh, just sign up after there, uh, out there, and we will stay in touch. Praise God. Well, how many love Jesus? Amen. Amen. All right. If you have your Bibles, open them tonight to uh, the 17th chapter. I think Bibles right here. Thank you. All right. We've got yep. Bibles in the creeds. Yep. Bibles in the creeds. No excuse not to open them. Yep. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. John's Gospel. Here. Gospel of John, chapter 17. John 17. Thank you. And I'd like to speak to you tonight uh, about the glory of God. The glory of God. John 17? John 17. Let's pray. Right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the precious people of God who have come out tonight to, to hear the word of God, to be encouraged, to be helped, to be blessed, and to bless you, Lord. And we just pray that you would come through tonight. Yes. And that you would do the work that you do best, Lord, touching lives, touching hearts. Yes. And we want to experience your presence tonight. Mm -hmm. We want to experience your glory tonight. Yes. We want you to to just fill this place, to saturate this place with the glory. Mm -hmm. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We, uh, we invite you to come in the fullness yes. of your presence. Moses said, show me your glory. Yep. And so, Lord, tonight we ask you to show us your glory. Yes. You said to Moses, I'll make my goodness to pass before you. Lord, Bring your goodness in this place. Hallelujah. That we can oh, that we can taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. That Amen. we might know, Lord, that it's not just a doctrine. Doctrine's important, but Lord, you are a person. Yes. You are the greatest personality in the universe. Yes. And so we welcome you. We want you. We yes. desire you. We thank you. And we love you, Lord. Yes. We love you and we honor you. Lord, I thank you for each person that's here. You love each one, Lord. Mm -hmm. You love them with a love everlasting 
love, therefore you have drawn them with loving kindness. Yes. And I just thank you for that pervasive love in this place tonight, in the name of Jesus. I just thank you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit, just filling the atmosphere tonight, Lord God. Yes. Oh, Lord, be glorified in this place. Yep. We honor your presence. Mm -hmm. We honor you and welcome you, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name. Thank you. And all the people said, Amen. 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 Well, we begin in John's Gospel in the 17th chapter and verse 20. This is Jesus' great intercessory prayer uh, before he went to the cross. John 14, 15, 16, his great teaching to the church, preparing them for his departure and for what was to come, which is the, basically the era of the Holy Spirit. Yep. Preparing them how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. And then also before he went, and he prayed for us. He prayed for you. And so this prayer is for you. This is not just uh, words in a book. This is God's, Jesus' intercessory prayer for you. And we'll just read part of it, but I encourage you to, you know, to take this in your private time and read it and absorb it and recognize that's for you. Yeah, amen. Can I have an amen? Amen. So let's read beginning in the uh, 20th chapter. And we'll read down to verse 24. I do not pray for these alone, in other words, his disciples that were with him, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Now, if you're a Christian, he's talking about you. Just turn to your neighbor and poke him a little bit and say he's talking about you. Come on. He's talking about you. Tell me. <laughs> And this is what he prays, that they all may be one, as long as they're both of us. That they all may be one, as long as they're Baptists. That they all may be one, as long as they're Catholics. <laughs> See, he has one body. And there's one God. One Savior, we're called according to one hope of our calling. There's one Holy Spirit. Yep. He makes us one. And we're to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Because we are one people. And Jesus prayed that we would be one. That they may be one. As you, Father, are in me. How many believe Jesus was unified with his heavenly Father? Amen. Amen. So he says, in the same way that you and I are united, I pray that my people would be united. That they may be one in us. What's their, how do we find their, our unity? In our denomination? Nope. No, in him. In him we live and move and have our being. Amen? Yep. Amen. Our unity is in the Lord himself. Yes. That they may be one in us. Why? That the world may believe that you sent me. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen? That's what I've given my life for, to see people come to know the Lord. Amen? But you see, we need to be one. We present Jesus when we're one, and yep. we move together. Yep. Praise God. And verse 22, I want you to notice what he says here. And the glory which you have given me I have given them. Amen. That they may be one just as we are one. He gave us his glory. Think of it. Jesus said, And the glory that you gave me, Father, I have given Myrtle. Amen. 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 Praise God. And Vicki. And Scott. And Tom, hallelujah, I got the glory. <laughs> I got the glory that God gave Jesus. Think of it. Jesus prayed, and the glory that you have given me, I have given them. See, church, that's why we're called the body of Christ. We've got Christ in us. Mm -hmm. Colossians 1.27, is Christ in you. The hope of glory. The hope of glory. Amen. The glory of God. 
Oh, if I could just get the glory. He has given us his glory. It's not that we need to get the glory. We need to realize we have the glory. Are you here? Yep. His glory has been given to the church. Ephesians 3 says, Glory to him be glory in the church throughout all ages, world without end. Glory to God. Amen. His glory is upon us. Isaiah says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you, church, and his glory shall be seen upon you. Yep. Oh, thank God for the glory of God. That's what we need in this hour. We need his glory to be manifested in the earth. Amen. You know, I read a lot about revivals and past moves of God, men and women of God that Served God and experienced His power in great places. And recently, I, I've come to know more about uh, a revival called the Hebrides Revival. The Hebrides is actually the most recent revival in the United Kingdom. It happened in Scotland, some islands called the Hebrides Islands. And there was a, an evangelist involved named Duncan Campbell. And so he's kind of a famous leader of the Hebrides Revival, but actually there was two little ladies that <laughs> were the initiators of it. They prayed it in. Mm -hmm. One of them was blind, and the other one I don't think could walk very well, but they could pray. And they prayed revival upon their islands. And uh, they sent a letter to Duncan Campbell, come to the Hebrides. And Duncan Campbell was scheduled out. He was an evangelist, well-known, and he had plenty of meetings. He said, I can't come, I'm booked. But God told him to go. And he told the person he was with, I have to go. The Lord's directed me. He went to the Aberdeen Islands and they began to pray. They began to have meetings. And they began to seek the Lord. And something happened on those islands. And the real condition that precipitated in the hearts of the people was that they gave themselves completely to God. They gave themselves completely to God in prayer. They unreservedly gave their lives to Jesus. And they began to pray and seek the Lord and the power of God began to move and, and many, many people were converted to the Lord. Duncan Campbell said his, his definition of revival is this. When a community is saturated with God. When a community <clears throat> is saturated with God. They said that in the Hebrides revival, they would be having prayer meetings. Sometimes they'd be praying all night. But people in their homes would be awakened by God and come out of their houses asking, where is this prayer meeting? And they would search and find the prayer meeting and they would come and fall on their faces before God and get saved. The community was transformed. These islands were transformed uh, by the power of God. Yeah. Interesting side note, uh, what it means I don't know, but actually uh, some of Donald Trump's relatives were from that island, and, and uh, I think some of his family was actually part of that, maybe on his mother's side, I don't know the details of that, you can research it. But the point being that God wants to saturate your life, and your church, and your community with his presence, with his glory, can I have an amen? Amen. And you see, he moves through his church. And we are the instruments of his glory. We are the carriers of his glory. So the glory that you have given me, Jesus said to his father, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. See, the glory makes us one. When we experience his glory, none of these labels matter. It's all Jesus. It's just all Jesus. The glory, you know, the glory makes us see. The glory enables us to see God as he really is and experience him. I and them and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Wow, there's another one. 
There's some pretty hot scriptures here. Think of it. He said that you have loved them, Father, as you have loved me. Now, how much does the Father love his son, Jesus? Hmm. What's the quantity of that love? What's the quality of that love? That's how I love you. Glory to God. Amen. And when we experience his glory, it's really experiencing his love. Yep. The glory of God is ours through Jesus Christ. What is the glory? Well, I have some definitions here. The Old Testament word translated glory means blazing splendor, flaming holiness. An invasion of, of the material universe by the majesty and splendor of God. An emanation of light proceeding from the divine presence or from the person of a sanctified being. An expression of God's active presence. Everybody say presence. Presence. Yeah. Active presence among his people. The New Testament word is doxa. That's where we get our word doxology. And it means the majesty associated with God's self-revelation. Or simply a manifestation of his presence and power. God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. But this is a special revelation of his presence which is not seen everywhere. When God's glory is unveiled and recognized, all the things which human beings take pride in fade to nothingness. Yeah. When we begin to see God as he really is. You know, it says in Isaiah 6 that he saw the Lord. He said, I saw the Lord. I lifted up. And his glory filled the temple. You know? And, and he immediately you know, fell on his face and saw the uncleanness of his life. Oh, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. His glory reveals our sin, our sinful nation, uh, nature. I was listening to a testimony of a man, his name is uh, Matt Sorger. He's uh, an evangelist that God has raised up and is using mightily. And he was sharing how he came to the Lord. He was in a uh, a family that went to church but knew nothing about the new birth. They had no uh, understanding of how God can come into a person's life and make them different. They had some religion, but they had no life. And his mother had tremendous sickness in her body. I think it was uh, crippling arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis or something like that. And she was invited to go to a meeting. Actually, I think it was at a Catholic church. And during this meeting, there was an evangelist there that preached the gospel and began to pray for the sick. And she was instantly and totally healed of her arthritis condition. And she came home a different person. And she walked in the house, and there was Matt, her son, a teenage son. And he looked at her and said, who are you? You're like a different person. And she shared what God had done in her life. And he said at that moment, instantly, he saw his sin nature and that he needed a Savior. And within a week, he had become a Christian, was born again. And then him and his mother got involved in a Bible-believing uh, church, and he began to grow in the Lord, and things developed, and he has tremendous ministry today. But you see, the glory of God reveals God. It's God, it's God on the scene. You know, his glory is really him. Yeah who he is. Mm -hmm. We could define glory, I guess, in the simplest way is God here. God here. God's here tonight. Amen? Because Amen. glory is here tonight. Yeah. And you know, as we talk about his glory, we become more aware of his glory. I can sense that even now as I'm talking about you know, his glory and his presence, we're becoming more aware of it as we talk about it. And it also welcomes him that we honor his presence. Some of the words, I think, to me anyway, that are related when I think of the glory, and they're not synonymous, but these are all similar or related. The presence of God. The presence of God. The glory is like the presence, the glory of his presence. The anointing or the tangible anointing, when you sense God's presence through the anointing. 
The manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit in 1977, His presence came over me. His glory came over me. His glory came in me. Went through me like electricity. His power. And I tell you what, I've never been the same. He changed me. Amen. He delivered me from drugs and alcohol and made me a different person. People looked at me and said, man, you look different. I look different on the outside because God had done something on the inside. Praise God. It's His glory. He wants to. He wants us to receive His glory. He wants us to be filled with His glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the glory will bring blessing in your life. Paul said he's even talking about the the, the material needs of the church in Philippians. He says, "And my God shall supply all your need according to His." riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You see, in the glory, there's answers to your problems. You know, God can help you even in material things. You know, I know there's a, you know, there's an extreme in the area of like prosperity. Now, I'll tell you what, God does prosper His people. Amen. I know He's prospered me. And one of the biggest ways that He prospers us is by giving us wisdom. Yeah, amen. And we get that wisdom by hanging out with Him. The more we know Him, the more He will show us how to live, how to handle our finances, how to cut up credit cards if that's what's needed. I mean, one of the biggest things is, you know, you can believe God and you can know all the promises, but if you keep getting in debt, 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 <laughs> you're digging a hole for yourself, amen? So there's practical things. But see, in the glory, we learn things from the Lord. The glory is what we need. We need His glory. To Him be glory in the church throughout all ages, world without end. And as I said, another one is the goodness of God. It's very similar because remember, when Moses said, show me your glory, God said, my goodness will pass before you. It's interesting that, that Moses said, show me your glory, and yet before that, the Bible says, Moses talked with God face to face. So apparently, even though Moses talked to God face to face, he really didn't experience the totality of his glory. He wanted more. Amen? And there was more. God didn't say, well, you're seeing my glory. No, he says, I will show you. you know, I, will, I will make my goodness to pass before you. You see, his goodness... It, it all goes back to God. God on the scene. God with us. Amen. And the Lord is here tonight. Can I have an amen? Amen. amen. Some other scriptures on the glory in the Old Testament. When the children of Israel uh, failed to go up and take the promised land, God, of course, uh, had judged them and was going to judge them. And Moses made an intercession. And, and according to Moses' prayer, granted them life, uh, but it was kind of like, you might say, life in prison, walking around the wilderness for 40 years. But at that point, he said, truly as I live, all the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. So I believe that God wants to fill the earth with his glory, like we talked about with the Hebrides. He wants to do it in Starkweather and Webster and Devil's Lake. And he wants to fill the land with his glory. Somebody said, this is God's country. This is God's country. This is God's country. Amen. So Amen. let's let him have a place. Amen? Amen. Let's let him have his way. Amen. Amen. Let his glory be revealed in us. Yep. Let us be filled with the glory of God. And, and let the Lord have his way. In Habakkuk, he says very similarly, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Uh, in 2 Chronicles 7, 1, it tells us the glory of God filled Solomon's temple when they praised, when all the praisers came and worshipped the Lord. The glory filled the temple, and the priests could not stand because of the presence of God that was there. I mean, sometimes the glory is just so overwhelming, you can't function. Think of it. And you're just overwhelmed by His glory and by His power. We need to invite him into our churches like that. We need to invite his presence into our homes like that. 
Can I have an amen? Amen. 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 The Bible said in John uh, chapter 2 that Jesus manifested his glory when he made the water into wine. Miracles are a manifestation mm -hmm. of the glory of God. Yeah. When he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead, he said to Martha, Did I not say to you, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Think of what that day was like when Moses walked, I mean, when Lazarus walked out of that tomb. Praise God. Lazarus, come forth. I love it. What a glorious thing, amen? amen? And God wants to continually and continue to manifest his glory in ways like that, in Jesus' name. Praise God. All right, I want to share with you tonight uh, basically four thoughts about the glory of God. And the first one is this. Adam lost the glory. Adam lost. Everybody say, Adam lost the glory. Adam lost, lost the, the glory. glory. It tells us in Psalm chapter 8, verses 4 and 5, What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. When God made man, the Bible said, we talked about this this morning, he made us in what, in the image of God. Mm -hmm. And here it tells us that he crowned him with glory and honor. That word in the Hebrew when it says crowned means to compass about or to enclose. He was, Adam was literally clothed with the glory of God. Amen. He was glorious. He was made glorious by God. His glory, the glory of the Lord was upon him. But then Adam sinned. And it said after he sinned that he hid himself from the presence of the Lord. He put up a barrier between him and God because of his sin, because of the guilt that was on his life. He hid out. Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. And then God pronounced a curse upon them and removed them from the garden. And the garden being the place where God met with man. And so not only did Adam separate himself from God, but God separated Adam from his presence. And the Bible tells us in the book of Romans, he did that. He made, it, he made them subject to vanity. He put, basically he put an emptiness in man so that he would come back to him in the right way. And so you remember that in the garden, that God put up a angels with a flaming sword to keep the way of the tree of life. So that Adam was not able to come back and come into that blessedness. But how many know that Jesus said, I am the door. Amen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus is the one that opened that door for us to come back into the presence of God. In Hebrews chapter 10, it says that we are to have therefore boldness, brother, to enter into his presence by the blood of Jesus, by a new living way which he's consecrated for us through his flesh. Yes. So Jesus, you see, has made a way for us to come back into the glory of God. It's interesting, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right? Right. Because spiritual death is upon the human race. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says that because of Adam's sin, sin came on you, on the whole human race. And death by sin, for all have sinned. And then as I said in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now let's go there because we quote that a lot. But let's see what it says in context. Romans chapter 3. And let's read some of the verses around this now. Romans chapter 3, and we'll begin in verse 21. But now, everybody say now. 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 But now... 
the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now is referring to this present age since Jesus died on the cross. He said now the righteousness of God has been revealed. Now there's a way for you to become righteous in the sight of God apart from the law. The Old Testament says you do this and this and this and this and then you're righteous. Well, nobody was able to. But Jesus came to break the curse of the law and to make a way for us to receive a gift of righteousness. So he says now the righteousness of God apart from the law is made manifest. And then he says being witnessed by the law of prophets. In other words, this is not contrary to the Old Testament. It was predicted in the Old Testament. The gospel, God knew all along what he was going to do. He was going to send Jesus to die for our sins so that we could be righteous. You see, we have to, we have to be righteous to receive the glory of God. We have to be righteous to come into his presence. We have to be righteous to have eternal life. But none of us can be righteous on our own. All our righteousness is what? Filthy rags. Filthy rags. But there's a righteousness. Amen. How did the words of that song go that we sang the last uh, verses there? Oh. Uh, my, 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 one. my one defense. My righteousness. My righteousness. Oh, God. oh God, how I need you. We need him to be righteous. Friend of mine, evangelist, actually serving as an evangelist in the United Methodist Church, trying to trying to hold the line there, to preach the gospel. But anyway, in his newsletter in uh, at Easter this year, uh, he said, "I rest my case at Calvary." That's good. I rest my case at Calvary. That's how we can face the judge. <laughs> Right? Right. Yeah. I rest my case on what Jesus did. So, verse 21, righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed being witnessed by the law and prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is through faith. Everybody say, I believe. I believe. I believe. Which is by believing, is by faith in Jesus Christ to all and upon all who do what? Believe. For there's no difference. Amen. Jew, Greek, Lutheran, Catholic, Baptist, <laughs> Muslims have returned to the Lord. He loves everybody. Amen? Yep. But Christ is the answer. So even the righteousness of God, which is through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and upon all who believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Nobody is good enough without Christ. Yep. Not even Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tease her about that. <laughs> but God loves us. He's made a way for us. Can I have an amen? Amen. amen. Verse 24. Being justified. How? By faith. Freely. By his grace through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. Redemption means he paid the price. Turn to your neighbor and say he paid it. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Whom God set forth to be a propitiation. That's a kind of a big theological word. It just means satisfaction. He satisfied the claims of justice against us yeah. through Jesus Christ. Yeah. He is our propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. Because of his forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were previously committed. Praise God. Oh, I thank God. All those sins I've committed have been passed over by God because of what Jesus did. Yep. Praise God. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I said, yeah, I know that. I, I've been coming to church for 40 years. Walk in the light of it. Walk in the freedom of it. Know what it means for you. Amen. It opens up a whole realm of life. It's his covenant, the blood covenant. His blood was shed for you that you can enter into everything he has, that you can experience every single thing he has. 
And then verse 26, it says, to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness. See, we don't need our righteousness. That he might be just. How many believe Jesus is just? Amen. And the justifier. So not only is Jesus just, he's the justifier. He's my justifier. Amen. He has justified me. That means he made me righteous. He made you righteous. His blood makes you righteous. Amen. As you believe in what he did. Can I have an amen? Amen. amen. He is just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Amen. So point number one is Adam lost the glory. Amen. Point number two, Jesus revealed the glory. Turn to John chapter 1. How many like to study the Word of God? Yeah, amen. 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 One of you do. Good. Praise the Lord. John chapter 1. Notice what it says in verse... Well, let's begin in verse 12. But as many as... What? Believe. My Bible says, as many as received him. John 1 12. As many as received him, to them gave he the right to become the children of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word, verse 14, and the word, that is Jesus, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his, what? Glory. Glory. What kind of glory? The glory of the only begotten, of the Father, full of grace and truth. But notice what it says in verse 16. And of his fullness have all we have all received and grace for grace. It says that Jesus came to reveal the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Then it says, and of his fullness you have received. We've received of this glory. Amen? Amen. And there's a way for every one of us to receive. Maybe you're here today and you've never received God's promise of eternal life. Well, he's made a way for you through Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 10, it says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So he tells us if we will believe in our heart in what Jesus did, and we will make Jesus Lord of our life and we'll confess him as Lord, will be saved and will be made righteous. And so if you've never done that, tonight we'll give you an opportunity to receive Jesus. He said, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become a child of God. Yep. And I thank God that's happened in my life. You know, I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it. But I now I can rest my case on Calvary. Yep. Can I have an amen? Amen. So Adam lost the glory. Jesus revealed the glory. Now, we have the glory. Turn to 2 Corinthians. And the third chapter. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious, talking about the Old Covenant, see, God revealed his glory in the Old Testament. He says, if the, if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadfastly in the face of Moses, 
because the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Everybody say more glorious. More, more glorious. For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because the glory that excels. In other words, that's nothing. He's saying, basically he's saying, you know all that stuff you read about Moses? That's nothing compared to what we have. <laughs> in comparison, what we have is much more. We think about these experiences that Moses had and things that we read in the Old Testament. But wow, God has much more for his church today. Amen. For if that which is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. You know, his face was so radiant that they couldn't look at him. So he had to put a veil over his face. Paul says, I'm not doing that. You're going to look at the fullness of this glory. And I have an amen. 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 But their minds were hardened. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. They read it, but they don't understand. They look at it, but they do not see. Because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, notice verse 16, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. You see, here's the key. When one turns to the Lord, I had an experience with the Lord in 1977, and the Lord spoke to me, turn from the things of the world. There were things in my life that were not right, that were not good. I was not living for the Lord, but I was seeking God. And I was in a, a fellowship of believers that were having a real experience with God. I saw the love of God, and I was pursuing God. I was seeking God. And I had an experience with the Lord, and he spoke to me, turn from the things of the world. And I lifted my hands, and I said, yes, Lord. And everything changed. The lights went on. You see, when one turns to the Lord, the glory is revealed. When one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. The veil of his glory, the veil into his presence. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen? But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into that same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So when we have this experience, when we have this turning, when we have this repentance in our life, and we turn to the Lord and we look Him in the eyes, you know, in, in chapter 4 it says that the glory of God is revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. I've had the Lord speak to me many times, look at me. Look at me. And sometimes I go, ooh. Because <laughs> it's an intense thought, right? To look the Lord in the eyes. But that's it. Look at me. And Psalm, he said, When you said, Lord, seek my face, my heart said, Your face, Lord, will I seek. Seek the Lord. Amen. Seek and you will find. Amen. Stretch out to God. Press in to His glory. Press, press into His presence. <clears throat> Come before the Lord. Seek His glory. Be filled with His glory. Amen. Turn to the Lord. And it says, We all, we with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed from glory to glory. Amen. I don't know about you, but I believe God's not done with me yet. Amen. Amen. I believe He's still working with me. Yeah. Amen. But he's going to do the work. I can't do it. I can't fix myself. But his glory can do the job. Amen. Yeah. There's so much in his glory that I need. Amen. And as I look with an open face, 
See, an open face is, here I am, Lord, warts and all. Amen? Just being honest, just being transparent with the Lord. Not hiding yourself. Amen? But coming. That's what I believe he said. Come with boldness before the throne of grace. Come based on the blood. Sometimes we pray for people and we say, oh, they're a good church member. They give their tithes. They do this. They do this. Lord, heal them. But you know, that's not, that's not really a, a basis for healing or anything else. The basis is the blood of Jesus. Yep. That's what he did on the cross. Amen. And we just give ourselves to that. And then he changes us. He makes us really good church members. <laughs> he makes us. Amen. He brings us into what he has for us in our life. And he uses us for his glory. Amen. So, we have the Lord. Can I have an amen? amen? Final thought, we're carriers of the glory. I'd like for you to turn to Acts chapter 5. <clears throat> and the 12th verse, Acts 5.12, it says, And through the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared them, join them, but the people esteemed them highly, and believers were increasingly added to the Lord. Multitudes. Everybody say multitudes. Multitudes. How many want to see this in your area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Multitudes of men and women. Yes. This is why we're going to talk about the next two nights about, about the anointing, because God wants you to to bring his touch and bring his glory into this community. Yep. And we're going to have classes the next two nights, and we're going to focus on the anointing. We're going to talk about how to cultivate the anointing in your life. We're going to talk about, especially uh, Tuesday night, the healing anointing. And God will use you in healing. Yep. So I hope that you can come for those, uh, for those two uh, classes in our uh, Believer School. Praise God. So that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those that were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Yep. Folks, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yep. These are the Bible days. We cannot look at the book of Acts and say, that was then, this is now. You say, no, he's still writing the book of Acts. Yep. Amen? I see it all the time. God's still doing it if we just believe. God will use you. Yep. But I want you to notice this verse in particular in the 15th verse. It says, <clears throat> they brought the sick out in the streets and laid them on beds and couches, so at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Now, how many know a shadow doesn't heal? Yep. Right? I mean, I'm just passing by a shadow. But there was something about this shadow. Amen. There was a glory that was being revealed here. Amen? Amen. And where it says it fell on some of them, in the King James it says overshadowed them. Overshadowed them. And that particular word in the Greek is epashiatso. I believe I got it pronounced right. It means to throw a shadow upon, to envelop in a shadow, to overshadow from a vaporous cloud that casts a shadow. It says the word is transferred to a shining cloud surrounding and enveloping persons with brightness. It's used of the Holy Spirit exerting creative energy upon the womb of the Virgin Mary and impregnating it. A use of the word which seems to have been drawn from the familiar Old Testament idea of a cloud as symbolizing the immediate presence and power of God. In other words, this particular word that says that, the, the, that Peter's shadow fell or overshadowed is exactly the same Greek word that's used when the angel spoke to Mary and said the Holy Spirit will what, overshadow you and that holy thing that will be born in you will be called the Son of God. 
So it was that shadow of glory, that overshadowing, and that, that had the created energy that brought Jesus into the earth. And that same glory, amen, was upon Peter's life as he walked down the street. And people were there in faith to receive. And when he walked by, this enveloping glory came upon them. Remember what we said? That to whom be glory in the church throughout the ages. We are the carriers of the glory. You know, when you go to the grocery store, the tractor store, whatever kind of store you go to or school, you carry the glory of God with you. You know, they said in, in Smith Wigglesworth's life that many times he would he would sit down in a train or, or you know, and just sit with some people, and all of a sudden they become convicted of their sins. And say, Your presence convicts me. And people would get saved that way. They said that Charles Finney, the American evangelist, that he walked into a, a factory, like a textile factory or sewing factory, and there was ladies working there. And uh, some of them started kind of laughing at him, chuckling, and making fun. And he just stood there and looked at him. And one of them just began to break out in tears and became convicted of her sins. And he began to share the gospel with her, and then, and she got saved, and another one got saved, and another one got saved, and finally the manager said, we're going to shut down work, and they had a meeting. And people got saved in that place. See, we're carriers of God. We carry God with us. Remember where we started tonight? Jesus said, the glory, Father, that you have given me, I have given you. Amen. Now, are we living below our potential? If you think of that, according to the word of God, we carry God with us. Amen. Wherever we go, praise God. They also said in Finney's meetings, and Finney had an intercessory prayer guy named Father Nash, too, that was prayed in the glory into the communities where he was. And, but they said in, in his meetings when he would come into a town, there would be like a, a radiation zone around the town. And that people would become, even when they got near town, would become convicted. People would come in on a horse and carriage and, and uh, pull over to the side of the road and fall on their knees and begin to repent because of the presence of God. See, we're living in a day in which God will manifest himself if we'll allow him, if we'll pray, if we'll let him have his way. And I just want to challenge you to recognize that you are carriers of the glory. And to recognize when you pray, something happens. When you walk in the awareness of God, you touch people. Amen. You're carrying something with you. And I've seen it over and over again. You know, people can be hardened to the Lord and everything else. But when you touch them and pray for them, something happens. I mean, I've seen, I think, of in India, we held crusades over there. And one night we were, we were preaching in this village. And there's Hindus there. And there's also these Muslim men around there. And they gave an invitation for salvation and many Hindus came to receive the Lord. But these Muslim men were sitting in the back of the room with their arms crossed like this. It's just like, we're not going, we're not moving, you know. And so, you know, many came for salvation, which were Hindus. And then we began to pray for the sick, we began to lay hands on the sick, and some of these Muslim men, they had needs, so they came and they we prayed for them, for sickness. And God touched them. And then I said to them, would you like to receive Jesus? Yes. See, because that touch of God opens people to the reality of his presence and causes them to want him, to be open to him. Things that could not happen in other ways. And God wants to touch your community. And God wants to use you. God wants his glory revealed. God wants his glory revealed even here tonight. Can I have an amen? Amen. So we're going to pray for needs tonight. But before we go any further, I'd like to just have a holy moment and just see, you know, just see if there's anyone here that's never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
Or if you, you know, been away from the Lord and you need to really make a recommitment and come back to Him, we'd like to give you an opportunity to do that. So let's just bow our heads before the Lord. If you're here tonight and you say, I never actually received Jesus, maybe you've gone to church and everything else, but you never really received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You really never become a child of God. You don't know that you're a child of God, but you'd like to be. Would you lift your hand if that's you? Anyone here would like to become a child of God want to be born again tonight? Would you lift your hand? Praise God. All right. Anyone here tonight who would say, you know what, I need, I need to be restored in my fellowship with God. I've been away from the Lord. I need to, I need to come back to the Lord tonight and just say, yes, Lord, I'm yours. If that's you, would you lift your hand? See that hand. Are there others? Anyone else? All right. All right. I want to invite you if you raised your hand or God's still tugging at your heart, just to come. I'd like to pray with you. And just we're just going to pray and just get reconciled with the Lord. Would you come? Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> what is your name? Natalie. Thanks, God, Natalie. God bless you. Yeah. I see that. Anyone else want to come before we pray? Would you stretch your hands towards Natalie? Just pray for her. Dear Father, I thank you for your love for Natalie. Here she is, Lord, just with an open heart. Just, just coming back to you, Lord, just to receive your forgiveness, your grace, and your healing in our life. Now I just say, dear Father, here I am, humbling myself before you. Thank you for forgiving me. I turn to you. Yes. I choose to follow you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for healing me. I choose to follow you. And I thank you that you are a good God and you love me. Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I'd like to just lay hands on you if that's okay. Praise God. Praise God. Um, Vicki, why don't you come up here too? Would you come? Just stand with her. Praise God. Just release God's love to uh, Natalie. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you, Father, for filling her with your glory tonight. I just thank you, Lord, from this night, she's never the same. Yep. In Jesus' name, yep. we break every stronghold of the enemy in the name yes. of Jesus off our mind. Yeah. We thank you, Lord, for forgiveness, for forgiveness, and we also thank you for healing and deliverance. Yep. In Jesus' name, yep. Satan, you're a liar, and you are defeated yep. in her life. In yep. Jesus' name, we take authority over the works yes. of darkness, and we lose God's provision of healing. Yep. In Jesus' name, Amen. thank you. Thank you. thank you for planting Natalie in the house of the Lord, giving her the adjustments she needs in her life, and giving her, Lord, the, the provision of the word of God that she needs. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Jesus. Oh, we pray your blessing upon her, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Father, that she knows your love. She experiences your love. Jesus, all praise God. The Father's love. Praise God. Thank praise you, Lord. God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Jesus. Oh, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. She understands what it is to be a child of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus said, the Father himself loves you. Mm -hmm. Father, who's Thank you, Father, for your love. Praise God. Just receive his love. Receive his embrace. The Father loves you. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. Praise Jesus' name. Yeah. Praise God.
Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus' name. Praise mm. God. Short test, much excitement, day about the most community in the Guru Kurumati Anamakaya. Fill it with Holy Spirit.
So if this is you, respond. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyone else before we pray? All right. Thank you. Will everyone stretch your hands and help us pray? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you for your power. Hallelujah. Lord, we have given you glory tonight. We've talked about your glory. We thank you for your presence doing the work tonight, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. We thank you. We thank you for the manifestation of your love, healing the brokenhearted. Yes. Bind up the brokenhearted. Lord, I, when I hear that, I, I just see like you wrapping a bandage around the hearts. Break that, to heal that brokenness, to put it back together, Lord, that the wound can heal Amen. in Jesus' holy name. Yes. So, Lord, we just lay hands on them in faith, yes. believing, Lord, for your healing virtue to go into these hearts and Amen. heal in Jesus' name. Amen. And, Lord, forgiveness, where there's been, where it's been hard to forgive, yes. give them grace yes. to forgive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That is just easy because, Lord, you have forgiven us. We can forgive others, too. Yes. We can know your love. Yes. We can give your love. We yes. know your forgiveness. We can give your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, thank you for the anointing. Thank you for your glory that makes the impossible suddenly possible. Amen. For all things <laughs> possible in God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Releasing the love of God to these ladies there. Hallelujah. In Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. You forgive all our iniquities. You heal all our diseases. You redeem our life from destruction. You crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming our lives from destruction. In Jesus' name. Lord, just bind up the broken heart. Hallelujah. Just wrap them up in your love tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord give us a prayer. Jesus. Some righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes, Lord. The joy of His presence.
Lord, that I overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord, that I overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of my testimony, and I do not love my life even unto death. Praise Jesus! Hallelujah! Praise Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Okay. 
Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to start with him. No, start with him? Yeah, All because right. the reason is because I think that's the one that, that, that the Lord was indicating first. All right. All right. So we're not leaving you now. All right. Even though you came up first, you helped pray. You helped pray. All right. All right. Stretch your hands this way. Just release God's love. Do you have a pain in the shoulder right now? All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we command pain to go in Jesus' yes. name. If you revealed it, now heal. Yeah, yeah. In Jesus' name. We command all the pain to go, or we, we command arthritis to go yeah. out of his shoulder in Jesus' yep. name. In fact, out of his body yes. in the name of Jesus. By your stripes he was healed. Amen. Lord, thank you for demonstrating your love mm -hmm. for this man tonight in Jesus' yes. name. What is your name, sir? Clayton? Clayton, be healed from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. Yes. In Jesus' name. We command healing into the spine. Jesus' name, and to the lower back and down into the legs in Jesus' name. We thank you for healing both of the shoulders. Yes. And we thank you for restoring in Jesus' yes. name. Praise God. All right, can you lift your arm? Praise God. Amen. All right, how are we doing? Better? All right, so how much better? You could raise that far before, and now you're raising this far. All right? So let's thank the Lord. There's a group in here. Where are you so thankful? You look at them, Clayton, is it Clayton? Clayton's life. Thank yeah, you, yeah. Father. Now, Lord, continue to heal in Jesus' yeah. name. Yeah. In Jesus' name, all arthritis must go. Yeah. All pain must go. Thank you for releasing him. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. Yeah. Uh, Elijah outran the chariot. And Lord, so you can operate in the physical realm mm -hmm. by your Holy Spirit. Yes. So thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And you forgive all our iniquities. You heal all, all our diseases. diseases. Praise God. Amen. Yes, no? Praise God. Move it around a little bit. Okay, that's good. Now let's see how you're doing now. Praise God. All right. Praise God. How are we doing? Is it better, better yet? Better yet. Okay, so... When you came up on a scale of 1 to 10, how much pain did you have? About a 9. Okay, how much do you have right now? About a 5. So we're almost halfway there. Four and a half. Okay, we're going to halfway there. All right. Let's give God glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I'll take up. Five is better than nine. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for completing the work in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for completing the work in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. By your stripes. He was healed. Yes. The Lord's healing you, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Healing is coming forth in your life in Jesus' name. Praise Amen. God. And that's also done a work, I believe, in your heart tonight. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And thank you for that, Father. Thank yes. you for a demonstration of your spirit right here yes. in Jesus' name. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I want you to stay here in the presence of God, and I'll come back to you now. Okay? I'll come back to you in a minute. Just, just kind of worship the Lord. Just stay in His presence, okay? Just be quiet in his presence and love him. All right? Praise God. And just receive in Jesus' name. Stretch your hands now. We're going to pray for Tom's shoulder. Chronic pain, go. In Jesus' name, be loose and be free. In Jesus' name, Lord, thank you for the cure. Hallelujah. It does not need to continue, Lord, because you heal all our diseases. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for fixing whatever's amiss and any arthritis in there. You yeah. must go in Jesus' name. Any inflammation, you must go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. You're the Lord that heals him tonight. In Jesus' holy name. Praise God. Praise God. Lift your hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. How does it feel? Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, Mr. Um, Praise the Lord. Amen. How are we doing now? Better. Better yet? All right. This one hurt. This one hurt. This one hurt. Thank you, Lord, for completing your work in Clayton. Thank you for your great love for this man. Amen. Thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit you're doing here. Yes. Uh, I tell you, I'm enjoying God's presence. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Thank you for your anointing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We think of that glory that was on Peter's life that overshadowed mm -hmm. being sick and, 
Yes. Amen. Well, thank you, Lord, that presence is here. You are the same mm -hmm. yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Oh, Lord, I pray for alignment in his back, yes. in his shoulders, in his neck. Yep. I thank you for realigning him, yes. restoring him, yes. making him whole. I thank you, Lord, he's walking uprightly mm -hmm. in his spirit, mm -hmm. in his soul, and in his body. Lord, that this is a day of redemption. There's change coming yes. in his life. We just, we just speak it to be, Lord, in the name mm -hmm. of Jesus. Hallelujah. The hope is being restored yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That he's seeing a new horizon. Yes. He's got new possibilities. Yes. And we do thank you for breakthrough in his health, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. That his body begins to amend from this night, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Praise God. Forgive all his iniquities. Yes. Forgive all his diseases. Forgive yeah. his life of destruction. Yeah. And crown of loving kindness, Lord. And Lord, put a bounce in his step mm -hmm. and, and joy in his heart and smile on his face. Yes. Um, yeah. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the victory, Lord. Hallelujah. Clayton, the Lord loves you. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And you know, you're a man of means. You know what that means? It means you've got stuff. Yeah. And what you've got is God. You have the Lord in your life. Yeah. And just draw on that resource. He'll give you the wisdom you need too. You know, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just sensing there's areas in your life that you really need fixing. Mm -hmm. And uh, not just healing, not just physical healing, but the Lord is the answer. Yes. He'll give you the wisdom in those areas. Yeah. In Jesus' holy name. Yes. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. How are you doing? All right? Are you getting happy? <laughs> how's, that, how's that arm doing? Praise God. Praise God. How am I doing? Huh? Amen? Amen. Amen. Have a future. You can have a hope. Amen. Yeah.